We're two. We're probably the two best looking podcasters in the whole galaxy. Yeah. We, when, got, we got Star Trek here. Because when will it end is the podcast. What that, is it? What is it? Okay, good question. When will it end is a podcast, and it's where me and you, I'm Josh, you're Charles, and we watch a whole series of movies, and we try to figure out what's the deal here, you know? Was the real good, deal? Well, yeah, exactly. What's the real deal here? Was, re- was it good at the beginning? Was it better in the middle? How'd yeah. the end do? Can I ask you a quick question? Please. How do you spell that? Oh, okay, great question. Google it. It's very simple. Um, okay, so... Yes. Right. So we watch series from start to finish. A whole thing. And I'm feeling so much better. You I just say gotta that. Say, I think you're I just lying gotta to say. yourself. You no. were on death's door last night. Yeah. Our previous episode, Charles, looked like you were melting into my fold out camping chair in yeah. my office. I don't even remember the episode. Yeah. I think it'll be a delight for both of us to hear that one. Yeah. I remember the only thing I remember is having these dreams of elaborate gardenscapes. That's really beautiful. I I kept dreaming last night that I was at a Mets game. I left before the end and we rallied and won in the bottom of the ninth. Oh, no. And you were at where were you you were out the door? Yeah. I was like, I got to go. We're already losing like five one. You're one of those. Or is this a dream? Is that a dream Josh or a real Josh thing? Uh, no, I would never leave. Yeah, I, I would never do that. Like a Josh. No, I am very obsessive about stuff I like, and I would never miss yeah. any of it. Um, so there's another dad move. Dads never uh, leave. Dads never leave early. I'm not a dad. Okay, but no. Then I woke up this morning. I was reminded the Mets indeed were uh, viciously pummeled last right, night. We they lost were. by a large margin. It wasn't even close. It was very bad. Anyways, uh, we're speaking, of course, the morning after uh, we, we watched the third and and what looks like final entry into the rebooted Star Trek universe, which. I think we're both going to go ahead and say maybe for good reason they're putting a bullet in this one. But we watched uh, Star Trek Beyond, the third of the J.J. Uh, Abrams rebooted series. Mm-hmm. Um, we so really true. pardon what, me? what year did that come out? That's a good question. I think 2016 or 17. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. It's 2016. We asked a lot. We yeah, sure did. We did. We asked that a lot while we were watching it. Hey, we forgot to mention in the last episode that Kirk has a threesome with cat ladies. Yeah. Okay, anyways, we, we covered that now. Were there, are there cat, li- is this like, was that pulling races from Star Trek into it, or is that a new race? They're definitely having a lot of fun with this. What I really despise about this series is that, like, in the actual show, so much attention is lavished on learning about other cultures, mm. and in these movies, that basically almost never happens. It's, and, you know, it doesn't even include humans. Right, we barely understand, we don't understand what life is like anything. for them. Yeah. yeah. It's annoying. So, yeah, we, we, we talked about on the end of last episode trying to salvage maybe the finale of this three-part series to see, like, okay, new director Justin Lin, a guy who's made movies that I really enjoy, a lot mm-hmm. of the Fast and the Furious movies and such. Sure. And we've got the old Simon Pego, old 5'9", I want to say. <laughs> this show, I will say, we, we, we document the height of actors. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. And I got to say, I was very confused. I don't remember what happened. I was like, I think I had like 102 yesterday. Okay. While we were watching this movie. Dr. Charles has been diagnosing his own fever. Well, I just know. Like when I get sick for some reason, I always get a fever and I always get a sore throat. And that's it. It's pretty good. I have a sore throat this morning. Oh, buddy. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hopefully it's not for me. Do you think Star Trek made you sick? No, but I was just going to say, I swear that Simon Pegg swaps legs with his little creature buddy there's one shot where simon Pegg is kneeling down no he's like standing in one of the math holes or something oh you're right yeah there's a really weird part where he's like standing in a hole for some reason i was like why is he so short <laughs> yeah and i thought that he had swapped legs with is this in three this is in yeah. beyond yeah yeah the, when they were like using the old technology right and the old like, shit oh my god is this gonna be like shrek the third where donkey and and puss in boots swap bodies or simon Pegg and uh the little rock bean swap legs i like rock bean that's good his little chum he's always like get off that you old so-and-so um so let me let's just go ahead and say this this is no shrek three i have seen shrek the third the shrek the third is a friend of mine and star trek beyond is no shrek the third no 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 i was just uh, offering a very small comparison no no, i'm not saying you were i'm just saying like we were looking for like a renaissance maybe and i want to go ahead and just say this sure sure my memories were wrong well i think this is very fun to like we're very new in the podcast. The podcast is still like we still are having time to compare every series that we've watched to each other. Years from now, we're not going to have that luxury. So this is nice to be like, is this more of a Powers or is this more of a Shrek? Well, no, but Shrek and Powers both rally in the third. Right. But really, I'm just saying really like, hard. Shrek both. was fine. Good. Great. Okay. So like right. had a nice arc. Austin Powers was dog shit. Even more dog shit pretty good 
No, it's. I, I would say, I don't. I, we hold the first I guess powers in different esteem. Less, I hear what you're less saying. about yeah. judging it, like more about world building. It's like the intro world, like Shrek One and Star Trek One. Very loose, like barely made a world. Just like created the world, so we knew what to expect in number two. And then number two happened, and it's like they're starting to veer. Where number two in Shrek was like, wow, we really feel like we're getting new places and new characters, and we're exploring and we're understanding people. Star Trek's just like. It's never making the world big enough or understandable enough that we give a shit. Okay, so again, I would say in Star Trek Beyond, there's this like another huge structural mistake they make where again, we see, it, we begin in Maison C, hey, in hmm? Mediares, oh, what? a cold open, a je ne sais quoi. You know, uh, so right. Kirk and the squad, they're up to some hijinks, very brief hijinks, and then Shrek, then, then Shrek <laughs> <laughs> Captain Shrek of the USS Enterprise, Chris Pine, I think, would be an amazing Shrek. Paint him green. I'm saying it right now. Paint Chris Pine green. Yeah, I wonder. We could. We should just come up with a whole series of paint him green. Yeah, <laughs> like a, like on subway ads, paint him. Green. I think that's our fan art. If you can yeah. paint any of our favorite hunks green, and girl hunks too. Girls can be hunks. Anyone can be a hunk. I was thinking of making a BuzzFeed quiz. It was is this Shrek or Leonardo DiCaprio painted green? He would. He would commit. Yeah, paint him green. Paint him green. Yeah. Christian Bale would be. I mean, unbelievable. He would Shrek. get so fat and green. He wouldn't yeah. be like, don't fucking paint me. He would just turn I'll green. Turn, I'll turn yeah. green. Don't worry. I'm Christian Bale. Okay, no. Um. So Kirk at the beginning of this movie is like, I'm tired of Star Trek. He's yeah. like, I'm tired of Star Trek. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. But I'm like, we haven't really seen you Star Trek. We still haven't really had like what feels like a normal single contained episode of the Star Treks. That's the that's the problem. And then he says like it's starting to feel episodic. And yeah. It's like two on the nose. Like back right. off. Like And we also, don't... as you said, it's not. Right. Okay. In the original Star Trek movies and Next Generation, those were all movies that complemented an active weekly soap opera. Right. <laughs> like they were the these expanded versions of something that was a consistent running thing. And in this, we're just sort of tuning in just for the movies. And so without that connective fiber of an actual show, mm. we're left being like, well, where's the meat of these of these people? We're not really watching them grow. Yeah, or the the beans. Or but, the rock bean. Yeah, or that. But I was more just like, we don't have to, let's use vegan terms. What do you mean? Connective tissue is too? Well, you said meat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. To anyone listening, beans are as good as meat. Everyone agrees. They're a great replacement. For They're meat. a great replacement. You wouldn't even notice the difference. You know, you don't even have to like use pretend meats. Just you, put a bean choose, on it. Put a bean on it. One bean's fine. When you know that one bean, a single bean, has as much protein, yes, and meat fiber. Preach as a steak. And a steak will immediately give you cancer. Yes, immediately. and represents uh, a great moral failing that the universe has never encountered before. A daily holocaust of of lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, but I'll tell you this. Yeah, tell me. You know, you put a little bit of that uh, that uh, Bernays sauce on that. Ooh, I don't. They could kill a thousand more. Yeah, right in front of that's me. That's fine. I, was like, hum, 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 hum. I sent back a steak last week because it was not cooked properly. Where I was at a steakhouse and they brought me out a poorly cooked steak and I was like, I never do this, but I was like, this is not the thing I ordered. Was it over or under? It was overcooked. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. I, I hope you're not one of those dads that gets everything. Oh, my God. No. I'm like, I want it still mooing. Just no, bring no. it out. I'll eat it myself. No, the most like old men that request temperatures are, are like medium well to well. That's crazy. Yeah, on steaks. If you're hamburgers. going to get a steak, you probably should be getting it medium rare. Yeah. Anyways. Absolutely. As <laughs> I'm, I'm a fucking vegan. I know that. Medium rare. It's what you do. Yeah. It was overcooked. I, and they, I, they sent it back and said, and don't let anyone eat it in the kitchen. Throw it away. Yes. And I, I said, go get a bin and throw it away in front of me. Did they do it? They did. Yeah. What did they do with the bin? Did they eat it? They ate the bin. Yeah. I said, now you eat the whole bin. But, he, but I was like, I was very equitable. I said, everyone in the kitchen has to share the bin. Yeah. It's everyone's mistake. You like the, the back of house. I want to make do, sure well, they're eating. I, when I worked in a restaurant, I was a real back of house kind of guy. And you this were. is part of our dynamic. You're a front of house kind of oh, guy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You I mean, I, I fucking, I'm friendly with back of house. Well, everyone, yeah. everyone loves me in back of house, but you, I'm not one of them. You're a wiry, bespectacled, tattooed man in a, in a, who, who's generally speaking a very classy guy. I am a hairy man with a gut and I have an untucked shirt and my yeah. shoes are all scuffed up. So I think if you looked at us, you'd be like, oh, that guy seems back of I mean, house. Eh, our shoes are similarly scuffed. 
I suppose so. We're more alike than you may think. Wow. Who are we? Friggin' Spock and Kirk? That's the famous Star Trek theme, and they play it in the movie. Um, no, this movie was bad, and I didn't like it, and it was sucked, and I hated it. And it was bad. It was quite bad. This also, this was shorter than Star Trek Into Darkness, and yet felt somehow, that at least had chunks that worked, and this oh, yeah, I is see. a slog. I didn't give a shit about anything going on in no, this. No, it was like watching your... I wouldn't even say friend. Watching some reason you're in a room, a person that you know is playing a video game, and you're just like, "Can I go?" And like, "No, watch me play the video game." What you're describing is when your drug dealer is paranoid and makes you hang out for like half an hour, okay. so you're not just going in and out, right? And he's playing like some like fucking RPG, and you're just like, "I don't know what's going on." You're in hour yep. thirty of this or something. Yep. And he's like, "No, you can't go. The neighbors are gonna know." Just watch me play a little longer. Yeah. No, this did feel like. Basically, it goes on and on and on, and each new, over, like, really overthought and uninteresting action sequence has a little intro with, like, Kirk, to get through this thing, you got to do that thing. And at the same time, Spock got to do yeah. that thing. And yeah. like, okay, and then we watch that happen. And, and it's, usually it's Simon Pegg telling us. Right, who wrote barely, this movie. Yeah, it, that sucks. Yeah. That's like, I'm trying to think of an equivalent metaphor of, like, when one of the, not stars, but supporting cast members wrote the fucking movie. Well, I think about like, okay, we talked about this in other episodes, but like Jonathan Frakes directed multiple right. Star Trek movies to great acclaim. I think First Contact is believed to be easily of, of the next generation films, the best one. Yeah. And that's like, he's in that, he, you know, that's pretty crazy. That's true. I just felt like S- Simon Pegg's character had a little more to do this movie. Yes. And, and I'm not. I'm not sure why. Why do you think he had so much more to do? And that's got an interesting to, question. Got to talk to the lassie. He called that woman a lassie a lot. The lassie. Okay, so speaking of women. Yeah, I had a really good joke. Like when I had my really high fever, I just like woke up. and was like, Simon Pig, she's got a name. And then I went back to sleep. Wow, that would have been so good to yell at him. Yeah, Simon Pig. Yeah, Jamala. What's her name? The, the alien on the planet? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> I don't know. She was just dumb. We talked about this in the other movie, the whole like like oh, alien as savage dynamic that these movies really lean on. It's not that charming. And yeah, and what was her accent? It was I don't know. It was, it was not seemed good. vaguely racist, but I didn't did. really want to think yeah. about it too much because this like, movie was not worth it. It was either Jamaican or German, I couldn't quite tell, but it was like they did that dumb thing where it's like, Hey, my name is Scott M- Montgomery Scott. And then she's like, Okay, Montgomery Scott. And then he says Scotty, and then she goes, "Okay, Montgomery Scotty," and then she calls him Montgomery Scotty for the entire fucking movie, and it's it doesn't work. It's not. It's funny. never worked. It doesn't that work. joke has never worked. If I could rack my memory banks, I'm sure there's something in there, but like this it was seems like seems like an airplane joke that probably worked. In well, okay, airplane. don't call me Shirley. Right. Is basically one of the best jokes. Yeah, because it's delivered. Shirley, well. you're joking. No, I'm not. Don't call me Shirley. Like yeah. that's like. Leslie Nielsen is the funniest man. He's the funniest man. Is he? Right. He's dead, right? He did pass away, oh, which is a that's huge loss. Very sad. If you're listening to this and you have not seen the Naked Gun movies or Police St- Squad, Police or Squad, Police Squad, just the pilot of Police Squad is so much better than anything we've watched in the Star Trek series. What? Well, that 20 minutes is like the most perfect thing. Yeah, they're very different. <laughs> they're a little different. All right. Okay, so I wanted to tra- talk to, to you about something. We've been, something we do to monitor these kinds of movies is to, to gauge how good an antagonist we're given. Okay. And I would say in Star Trek, we've basically, yeah. I would argue, 0 for 3. I don't think any of those performances from Eric Bana or Benedict Cumberbatch or in this movie, the great Idris Elba. By the way, talk about wasting yeah. Idris Elba. This movie was fucking so frustrating. There is one scene, like it's an old video of him where he's not covered in CGI makeup. And I was like, Idris Elba is the greatest actor alive. Why are you making him talk funny and putting him behind this fucking makeup? Yeah, crawl. He's, he's amazing. And lo- can I just say something else? In the last movie, as far as structuring and pacing a series, we got a for- essentially a guy f- created by the Federation who now resents the Federation. Right. So for the third movie, boldly, they put together a villain who mm. is from the Federation and now resents the Federation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. And he lives in a nebula where they can't communicate out of the nebula, but he can monitor everything happening outside of the nebula mm. from this planet in the middle of the nebula. It is... They're kind of, it's, I hate that shit. 
Yeah. They establish a rule. It just doesn't apply to the Yeah, how does he villain. know everything? Right. How does he know Kirk? I don't know. Maybe I was just out of it, but like... No, it makes no seems. sense. He just monitors all of the Federation's shit. He's been there for like, what, like a yeah, like, like, decades or no, something? No, he's been for hundreds of years. Right. It makes no sense. And I, I, I guess like... I understand like maybe the, the idea is like, let's be charitable at Star Trek. The, you know, these individual episodes of the show frequently have all kinds of dumb bullshit and it's just fun. Yeah. But it doesn't feel fun. Yeah, it feels it like homework. Fun. Yeah. This oh was a God. real homework movie. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, like, how did he even know that there was that base that was built? Like, I don't understand how he knew anything. Right. Okay, so the, the whole thing is, like, we've built a new Halo-style thing called the, the Yorktown. And this mm. massive, crazy space installation for the for the Federation. And he just, like, knows it intimately and has... this. Okay, this is why this movie fucking sucks. In the beginning of the movie, Kirk is trying to give a, a, a present to a bunch of tiny, angry, insecure, like, gremlin troll guys. God. Yeah. And it's like a piece of an ancient weapon that he happens to have that happened to be part of a diplomatic mission that happens to be on the ship. Right. And then, of course, it turns out that every single thing Idris Elba knows about the Federation relies on Kirk, this stupid device thing, using the specific air conditioning method. Or like, Oh, my God. Air, like, it's the specificity of the plot makes it insane. <laughs> Where it's like impossible to like take it seriously, where you're like, this is so convenient at every possible opportunity. At least in the last movie, you really get the impression Khan is really fighting through some shit to achieve something. Yeah. And in this one, it just sort of seems like he has like every single conceivable piece of information possible, and all they have to do is stop him. For, it's, it's not interesting. There's no stakes there. It was so fucking boring while oh, i'm complaining just i'm so sorry i'm on a roll here with ranting yeah they built the, the i hate this shit where they're like we've built a massive new installation and they're like oh no it's gonna get destroyed and it's like okay you just it's just like the fucking klingon conflict in the last movie where they introduce something and then immediately that's the major thing we yeah. have no relationship to it right there's no stakes to it like watching so many other movies from lord uh, series like from lord of the rings to mm. sh even shrek the relationships are so paramount or like there, there's something at stake here and in this we don't feel that no like no. if we lose the thing we just learned about who gives a shit yeah it, it's and also I, I bet if you compared all the scenes of people outside running from a disaster in the three movies like I couldn't tell them apart that's the thing is the settings are so uninteresting and unexplained to us we don't get a sense of where we are ever it sucks right and I think the the the, the comparison here would be that like in the first two series we watched, there's these like really, we really watch Shrek, the, the, the Shrek reverse expand and it's like very rewarding, yeah. but it all comes back to something at the end of the day. Right. And it also powers like, I love that they're constantly going to shitty conference rooms. I love that. It's so yeah. funny. And in this, it's like, you're either on the enterprise or in like a very generic place that has very little con like feel to it. I don't know. And then like, I truly despised at the end of the movie, the massive wall of tiny B ships was fucking I hated it. It okay. was literally a wave. It was like, so that's not dumb. A, that's not a good... Sun Tzu would never recommend a wave attack. I often suspect the people who write the movies we watch have not read The Art of War. I think you're right. We I, quote this to each other almost all day. Oh, my God. Um, go to war. Sun Tzu. Hey, be good at it. Yeah, be good at war. Sun Tzu. I think Sun Tzu also said, you know, I say a little prayer for you. Say a little prayer for me. Yeah. Yeah. Sun Tzu, never eat more than four eggs a day. And after every meal, took 1,000 steps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we were both livid about something else in this movie. They Wait, can we... I thought you were going to tell me something that happened. Oh, today. no, I'm, and I'm building up to that. Okay. We're getting sorry. There. I'm so Trust sorry me. then. That sucked. I'm no, sorry. No, it's okay. It's we'll, okay. We'll get rid of that. We have a big reveal. Okay. It's a huge reveal. The day of recording happens to line up with a momentous occasion, and it's amazing. Wow. Yeah. I'm excited. So sorry, Jordan, Jesse, go. I didn't mean to say momentous occasion, but I think if I listened to your show for over a decade, that phrase becomes a part of my lexicon. Continue. Okay. In this movie, they destroy the Enterprise so quickly and so violently that I was legitimately l furious at this movie from maybe minute 15. Yeah. It's like the, the emotional device of destroying the Enterprise, you can't keep doing it no. over and over and over again. Yeah. Let us also just let us have it. Right. If you, it's like it doesn't mean anything if you keep destroying it. Let us have it. We, we're not going to like why would I other than it's it's like symbolic reference as at this point a pop cultural 
token of like 50 years now. Like uh, outside of that, we have to actually have some sort of relationship to it that we don't get from these movies. Yeah, I feel like um, I just it just it's it's like they tried to do this thing where in the first Star Trek, they're like, look at all this shit, you know, and we're going to fuck around with it. And it sort of works. And now it's like, oh, that sort of works in the first one. Let's you want to just destroy the Enterprise again? We'll fuck around with them some more. It's like it doesn't work anymore. Well, right, because in two, they're like running through the fucked up shitty Enterprise after it's, it's you know, been oh my God, they did shit. that again. They did it again. And it's like the lack of creativity is like appalling. Yeah, this is like this is an almost a, this is like, I think on one hundred eighty million dollar, eighty five million dollar budget. Please find out. I think it's that. Please find out. No, please find out. OK, I'll look it up. This is like uh, a new hope return of the Jedi, except there was no empire strikes back in between it. It's like they just literally ripped off a bunch of shit from the movie that they just made. Yeah, and this also, you know, performed the worst of all of them. It makes sense. I think the second one got a lot of critical, you know, uh, a lot of appropriate criticism well, for yeah. how insanely sexist it was. Mm-hmm. And this one, they like sort of address it by having it be sexless <laughs> entirely. Uh, yep. Because Spock and Uhura, oh, by the way, last we didn't talk about this in the last movie, but like Uhura's one big scene in the second movie is being like an, a, 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 an emotionally needy woman who just can't stop thinking about a relationship with a man. Yeah, but she does it in a way that seems like it's actually like strong, but it's really, it sucks. It's like all she cares about, like that's her whole basis for, her. all we know about her is that she loves Spock and she hates him. Like right. everything that she does is in relationship to Spock. So in this movie, wisely, she breaks up with him until yep. they get back together, which sucks. Yeah. Boo. Can you imagine being with Spock? No. He better. He probably his fuck game is probably insane. Yeah, he knows. He knows what to hit. Yeah, he's Vulcan. He's logical. Yeah, it was logical to stimulate your clitoris. <laughs> I just imagine you doing that to me. Stimulating your clitoris as yeah. a Vulcan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, you know. It was real hot. Whatever gets you through the day. It's going to get me through the drive home. Good. I'm happy to yeah. hear that. Okay. So we were talking about the film's antagonist, played by the great Idris Elba. I right. Feel- you know a great way to alienate your viewership and like really make your movie not make any sense? I know I already said this, but like get Idris Elba. Oh, who is, his, I think, the consensus most attractive man. One of the. Right. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of attractive men in this movie and women. It's a very attractive cast. Mm. Uh, put his name on the poster. Yeah. And then... Make him obscure him right through both voice and visuals completely so unrecognizable. You do not know who Idris Elba is for the entire movie. With that being said, Mr. Elba, congratulations on your marriage today to Sabrina Dowry in Morocco. Oh my god, Idris! He's a British actor, she's a Canadian model. They were married at, at a hotel in Marrakesh today. What's the age? The day of recording. Um, let me see. Sounds big. By the way, I nailed the production, the, the budget. 180 or 185. Something. Yeah, great. Um, they don't list their ages here. I, I, I can look. It doesn't really matter. Good for him. Well, just let him be happy. Let okay. her be happy, Sabrina. Yeah. What a good model name, Sabrina. Like, if you're named Sabrina, you probably got to be a model. Charles is is actively the consumption has reached. He's turning the color of a Star Trek guy. What's that? Well, either incredibly pale. <laughs> we talked about how uh, uh Chekhov in this movie looks terrible, and, Chekhov, and yeah, yeah the, the character, yeah, and Spock looks not the fucking actor. terrible. Not the actor, Anton Yelich. Uh, they both look awful in this. Yeah, we were saying like, and, what? Scott, and, and Montgomery Scott looks awful. Like everyone just starts to look like, like everyone looks like an. Okay, we're watching this movie, and I we had one of those moments where it's like, oh, is being an actor just like the truly the worst? Like <laughs> the this most is humiliating, embarrassing shit. Yeah. This movie sucks, and watch them like running around doing these stupid. It was so bad yeah it reminded me a lot of like never say never again where like for some reason everyone sort of looked like shit but they're still doing it like everybody well that movie is like i mean legendarily the worst bond movie i know i'm just I'm like saying using it for visuals like simon Pegg, anton yelp yelp yeah um, it's anton yelp yeah of the yelp family fortune yeah, yeah. Uh, even chris pine and zachary quinto like they look noticeably older and as though they didn't even give a fuck to like try to pretend that like they look ten years older, not one year older. Like it right. wasn't, yeah. And it's like, I know it's it doesn't really give a shit, but I, I just it's like the whole point of these movies is like it's hot men doing right. fun sci fi shit. 
Well, also, it's like, you know, the beginning of the movie, Chris Pine's like, I'm fucking sick of this shit. Yeah. And you're like, okay. And then the movie happens. You're like, I mean, I would for sure quit after this one. Yeah. And he's like, I guess I want to keep doing it. Yeah. And then, of course, I think from what I read online, the the reason Star Trek Four is not going to happen for a variety of reasons. One of them is they could not negotiate a salary with Chris Pine. Yeah. Who I think maybe was like, I think I have a way out of this one. I would like one billion dollars, please. One billion dollars. Please. I'll, I'll, they suggest that Chris Hemsworth was going to come back to do another. I'm a, I'm an American man. I'm and an I love American my man. Family. What should we call my Tiberius? Son? <laughs> no. Do you think if you have a a, a kid? Yeah. When you hear its birth, would you ask, what is it? What is it? <laughs> He's like, what is it? What is it? It's so bad. Yeah, what, why would you ask that? What is it? I what, would ask, well, what, is it healthy? Is it, oh how many God. feet we got? How many feet? Yeah, how many feet we got? What no, are you hoping for? Two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I, 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 want, right. I want a norm. If there's a third, you know. God, that's a Star Trek that's shit. That's a Star thing. Trek shit right yeah. there. <laughs> Man, I guess like sometimes... We think about the fun of these movies being like, we're going to have to get a grave, serious approach to this usually somewhat lighthearted series. But this series, I just want to go over what happens in this. Let's movie one, Nemo, Nero, Eric Bana kills six billion people on a planet. For not much of a reason, which I think is the best villain so far. Because he's confused that he thought they killed his right. whatever. I think that's the best villain so far. I guess. I mean, God, yeah. the competition is I know. so it's, weak. It's very bad. Movie two. Khan is like just Superman, J- James Bond, Ethan Hunt guy. Yeah. And that sounds good. He wants to like wake up his army of super assassins to like genocide the world. Does he? I think he just wants to have like a family reunion. Well, no, at one point they're like, you want to kill him who's not superior to you. And at that point in the movie, I was like, I don't really remember that being something he said. Yeah, but he okay. didn't seem to give a shit about that. Right. And then in the third one, that's like, what if an army of bee boats blew up a big globe full of people in space? Blurp. Blurp what? Right. And we talked about, like, again, in series pacing, and we're not doing the series, and please don't be mad at me, but something that's good about the Marvel Universe is that in the Marvel Universe, we have a movie like Spider-Man Homecoming, where not very much happens, or Ant-Man and the Wasp, where barely, like, almost nothing happens, and it's great. Yeah. Because in the middle of all this horse shit, we need grounding things. Right. Well, this is very different. Come on, man. We can't talk about this. It's not Marvel at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very different series. I mean, this would be that would be like we had a few Star Trek movies, and then we had like a Kirk movie and a a horror movie, which actually that sounds pretty good. But that'd be great. That sounds pretty good. I don't get why you hire you know Zoe Saldana, who's great. She's a great actress. She's a gorgeous human being. She's good at action. I think her action moments in this were really good. Yeah. And they're like, let's just do nothing with her. Yeah, especially in the second one, where all she got to do was be on a ship. Yeah. And worry that Spock was going to get at by a volcano. Right. And then I'm Spock's girlfriend. And then warp it down to where Spock was getting beat by Khan and shoot Khan six times looking very afraid. Someone ineffectively. Like she distracts him. Oh, oh, God. Oh, this isn't working. And it's like we established her in the first movie as as a strong, strident, awesome woman. And like, I don't know. Which leads... Speaking of women, it does lead us to a huge problem with this movie. Right. We asked for it, too. We asked for it. Okay. Um, I feel so responsible for this because, you know, in the other movies we complained uh, at how often women change in front of James Kirk. Right. And I got to say, like, you know, a lot of men, I pretend to care about women and social issues, but I really do want to see women change. Right. That's you why know? we come to the series. Right. I, I, when I see Star Trek movie, I want to see a woman just change. All right. We, Not we, for we... any specific purpose, but because people change. Yeah. People change Here's in, another question. in both sense. How much do you change during the day? Uh, like once, maybe? None. None. <laughs> okay, sorry. You're encased in whatever this is. No, I just mean like I'm like very na- almost naked to naked in my bed. Okay, I see what you're saying. I put clothes on. Yeah. And I, I wear just... briefs myself. So when I, w- I sleep naked, so I wake up naked, I put on briefs. Yeah. And yeah, then I right. go to bed and take all my clothes off. Like I don't change. I'll often undress in bed. Like, I'll go to bed with too much on, then I'll just, like, as I, in the middle of the night, like, take off articles of clothing, so I wake up, there's just, like, an outfit in my bed. Yeah, I did that. Oh, my God, that's so cute. It is pretty cute. The little invisible Josh. A little invisible Josh, like someone abducted someone. (laughs) Oh, God, that's so cute. Yeah. Uh, Last night, I wore a t-shirt and two hoodies to bed. You looked crazy. Because I was so, but then I woke up at, like, four in the morning and took off one of the hoodies. Wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful image. Well, I was going to say, 
Same thing. Yeah. Right. So in, in this movie... It didn't look like there was a little me gone. There was like a weird tie-dye. A mini you? Well, no, like no, not a, an invisible me. Sorry. Not okay. a mini me. That'd be uh, funny. And if there's Awesome Powers 4, an invisible me would be so funny. Yeah. That's a bit. Wait, invisible mini me? No, just invisible me. What's like, that? This time I've made a version of me that oh. no one can find. Oh, it's I invisible. It. And they just can't find him. That'd yeah, be that'd funny. That'd be so funny. That's a good bit. That's so good. Well, you ever see the three amigos, you know, the invisible? Yeah. Right? That, that's one of the fat oh, best jokes. Yeah, you just sort of stole it. When Chevy Chase shoots the invisible man, it is yeah. legitimately amazing. Man, but, I okay. miss those days where like, have you seen the invisible man or whatever? Like no. the it's so bad, but like they set up these elaborate sequences where it's just like a bike, an in, a bike without a man on it. Biking. Is that Claude Rains? It's a Claude Rains. I movie. think so. Yeah. yeah. Why'd you cast Claude Rains? Okay, anyways, whatever. It's just like so funny that that was what movies were. It's like, look at the shit we can do. Look at this. There's oh, a man gets hit by a rock, but nobody threw it. And now we're like, hey, we can take the most attractive man in the world, Idris Elba, and make him look like a fucking testicle. <laughs> We decided it looked like a testicle shoved into a shoved vagina. Shoved into a vagina. Okay, but no, no, no. Here's what I'm trying to say. We were a little off track here, and this is a very important point. No one, no hot babe changes in front of James Kirk in this movie. No. Of course he wants to quit. Babes aren't changing in front of him. Yeah. You know? He got used to a world where women just inexplicably change in front of him. What the fuck? And then we notice we're like, well, someone could have changed there. Right. Someone could have changed there. There are like so many moments where someone could have changed. There could have been upskirts. Sure. Oh my God. Just throw an upskirt in there. Just one shot of an upskirt. I would actually not put it past the fucking morons who make these movies to, to actually just do that. Just fan service. Like Kirk just falls and like looks right up at her skirt and she's like, James. He's like, <laughs> whoopsie. Whoops. I fell over. And he's just cranking one off. Yeah. Cuts him cranking. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. one cranks in these movies. I know. It's It's disappointing. Masturbation happens so rarely in movies. Yeah, I mean, I can think of a few, but yeah. I, I mean, watched a couple examples, but like it's few and far between. I watched a movie with my grandmother when I was a teenager where there's a very explicit masturbation scene. Was it high tension? No. That's right. There's one of that too. No, yeah, she was... like listens to like reggae and like Jack's awful. The family's getting slashed. Yeah. It was uh, a Wong Kar Wai movie. Uh, I bet it was mournful. Yeah. yeah, she was jacking off while someone else was doing something else, and it was sad. Yeah, yeah, uh, I forget which one it was. Broken Angels. Wanda Car Why should make a Star Trek movie? That'd like, the, the, I mean, twenty forty six is the as close as we're gonna get. I guess. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty it's fucking awesome. He'd be like, "What if there's a Star Trek where they were sad?" Yeah, but and like, well, what happens? He's like, you know, they hang out on the ship and they're just. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, and they, but they they know what love is and they can see it. But they they can't actually they can't feel quite it. Touch it. And they're like, okay, well, they're aliens. It's like, yes, but, but like they look, them. But they look just like Tony Long. And they can't feel anything. Yeah. They like know what they want to feel, but they can't feel it. Right. And one of them's a robot, but again, looks just like uh, Maggie Cho. Right. And, so. and at the end of the movie, they just land. Sure. Yeah. And that's just, they just continue with their lives, knowing that they can't have the one thing they desire. Right. And right. there's a little voiceover where you get a, like a scene of. That spring, I returned to San Francisco. Yeah. She wasn't there. Bum, bum, boo, doo, doo, yeah, doo, 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 Yeah. I'm thinking a good runtime. I'm thinking four and a half hours. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never saw the director's cut of Grandmaster. I hear it's a lot better than the one that the Weinstein brothers brought to the U.S. Oh, those guys. Don't get me started. Okay, but no. So this movie does feature... This movie feels like a concluding chapter for a variety of reasons, despite their talk of there being a Star Trek four, which, again, thankfully will be spared, I think. But, like, James Kirk rides a motorcycle again, like in oh first God, I was movie. Gonna, I was going to bring that up. You didn't like this at all. Which was worse, the reprisal of the motorcycle or the reprisal of the Beastie Boys? The Beastie, Boys. Beastie Boys by a zillion miles. <laughs> that was embarrassing. It was truly shitty. What the fuck? This kind of, like, needle drop bullshit, I get once in a while it pays off. But, like, I'm thinking of, like, American Hustle, which is a terrible movie that just has needle drops pretty much. What's, what's the difference between a needle drop and a mic drop? A needle drop is like, and now a big thing's going to happen while a song you already like plays because you're, you're going to like the movie because you like the song. Okay. For example, in uh, Ridley Scott's Abominable The Martian, a movie that I really wish didn't exist. It is terrible. It sucks. Really bad. I talk about a movie where there's a total lack of tension. When they put Matt Damon on Mars, you're like, I think he's going to be okay. Like, yeah. right? Like, you know. This is his home. Right. And he's like, suck my fucking balls, Mars, or whatever. That line everybody likes. But that, that movie does this thing that I hate, where in the beginning of the movie, there's a lot of icy cold synth music that's kind of cool and very like tangerine dreamy. 
And then later in the movie, when he's when things are going well, they play Starman by David Bowie. Yeah. A, a song I love by an artist I adore, but like it's not exactly the subtlest filmmaking to indicate that we are happy now than to like do that. Yeah. And this movie, I think, again, at the height of its absurdity, where it's like the enterprise against an ocean of tiny B ships and a massive wave, <laughs> and they're just all exploding at once. For no while- reason. It's not even like the Beastie Boys was all they said it was going to do was like cause them to not be able to, f- I guess they all crashed into each other, but it's like, it didn't look like it looked like the beastie boys were just exploding. It's, ships. it's, it's the same kind of screenwriting horseshit that I hate where it's like, Oh look, the Yorktown base. It's so big and full of people. It'd be a real shame if it got destroyed. Then they're like, Oh no, a big wave of army B boats. What if they all got destroyed at one time? It's like, it's not, it's not clever. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's look, a motorcycle. Cute. What if, what if, Kirk rides it around for 35 minutes. For, Jesus, that the, was so long. The the number of cuts to him on the motorcycle, just riding it in a circle. You can see Chris Pine being like, fuck my life. Yeah. This sucks. No one, no one is having fun in this. No. Even my beloved Bones, I will admit, it's a little, in, in a very weird effort to like play up the Bones-Spock relationship. I guess because like obviously. Yeah, let's talk for, about this. For lack of other things to do in this very boring series. They try to like play up the Bones-Spock antagonistic friendship thing. So let's let's talk about this. Because up until, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but up until the third movie, that's just not a thing, right? Right. They, they don't establish that prior to this movie. They don't. They get a I mean, maybe they don't like chill. Maybe they don't like drink scotch together or do whatever like friends but they like don't like there's a scene where he's like oh maybe i should bring the bones with me onto the ship because he knows the ship but he knows my injury and then bones is like no yeah exactly no! yeah i was like what he's your fucking teammate the right. fuck yeah the thing that's even more frustrating is that i think at the beginning of this movie bones and uh kirk have uh, some great scenes together I right. like Chris Pine. I love Carl Urban. They're really great together. They they have a nice scene of drinking together, sadly, which is good. That's a pretty Juan Car Y scene. They're just like drinking in like a dark room. The, the one that he's like drinking. It's like, my fucking birthday coming up. He's yeah. Like, yeah, man, that shit sucks. And that was the other crazy thing. This apparently happens all in one day. Which I is didn't even insanity. realize that until the end of the movie. And I was like, cool, this is dog shit. When they're like, oh, it's still your birthday. And I told everybody. It's like, what? This is this happened in 12 hours? A 9-11 happens in all of these movies. And people just react to it like nothing happened. Right. Like, again, in the Marvel universe, when like a lot of these things echo through the rest of the world. <sighs> and in this, it's like these insane things happen. Right. And it doesn't mean anything. And like, I, I, I think like... The beauty of Star Trek, the series, both the original and next gen onward, is that these people often carry a really heavy emotional burden. Things that happened to Picard in season one reverberate with him through season seven or whatever. And certainly, you know, DS9, my favorite of all of them, is just about emotionally crippled people who are permanently broken. And it's great. Wow, I've never seen that one. It's amazing. Yeah. In a world before Game of Thrones, it was like, imagine if there's a Star Trek. But it was fucking shitty and everyone wow. was sad. Wow, that sounds good. The first episode is about uh, the, the wonderful Avery Brooks, who seems like an insane person, who plays Captain Cisco. Um, is he the captain for the whole series? Yeah. Okay. The whole first episode is he thinks that these aliens are torturing him by bringing him back to the moment where Picard, as a board, killed his entire family. But they're like, there's this amazing moment where the aliens go, no, you keep bringing us back to this inside of you. Whoa. Like your own, like you're that's doing good. this. We're not drawing you to this pain. You refuse to let go of this pain. Like that's the kind of shit that they tried to do in this movie. And it, and that's the pilot of a series. And it's like amazing. And this entire movie, th- that resonance never gets there. No. And like even Spock in the movie too being like, oh, horror, I cannot tell you I love you because my whole planet was killed. And now I cannot love anyone basically. But it's yeah. I love you at the same time. Was that this one or the last one? Who knows? Who gives a shit? Their relationship sucks. Yeah. Uhura, you have everything going for you. Date someone else. Not not Kirk, though. He's got space HPV. Yeah. He's you can just see his, his, his freaking eyes. Yeah. He's yeah. got beautiful eyes. This one, he didn't have quite as beautiful eyes. Well, there's that one in two when Peter Weller and uh, yeah, Chris Pine, they cut back and forth. You're like, who's like... got more mesmerizing <laughs> sapphire eyes? Yeah. Yeah, they really brought that blue out. I wonder what it's, is, do you think he's like that in real life or do they, they, they do enhancements? I'm certain he's a normal person in real life. I mean, I met Liv Tyler. And it was, it's, it, do you, it, people often talk about seeing the most beautiful person we've ever seen in real life. Is, does she, does she have that quality? Yeah. 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 It's so weird. Really? Galandriel. I love your movie. We were like, she, she just looked like another species. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's pretty amazing. 
Mm. And then she signed. Uh, we're like, why do you think that's Liv Tyler? Because she has a house in Maine. That's classy. And she came into the bookstore that I worked at. And so she bought some books and then she signed it. And her credit card was Liv Tyler. Were they dirty books you're talking about? She went to the... Some J.O. Some material? Sex, sex the adult section. Yeah. Yeah. I kept the credit card receipt. But the book she bought was just, what is sex? What is sex? What is sex? Never had it. That's the, that's the subtitle. Never had what it. What is sex? Yeah. Never, never had, had it. it. Yeah. yeah. That's the, there's the follow-up book. Still haven't had it? Well, you never will. Well, the third one is, finally had it. Wasn't that great? Yeah. Didn't care for it. Good series. Not for me. This sounds like a bit from fucking Love Guru. Oh, God. God, there's so many titles and acronyms in that. Not good. Yeah, uh, Allison was talking about drama yesterday on the phone, and now every time I hear the word drama, all I can think about is the love guru. That movie has had an impact on my life. No, it's true. Once you like, exp- much like um, a space virus you'd encounter in Star Trek. Sure. Once you have it, you're really fucked. Unless you have Benedict Cumberbatch's blood, right? And then you're okay. Maybe I should get some of that. Some of his blood. Yeah, just smear it all over my balls. What would that do to your balls? Make him bloody. Make him tingly. Yeah. Like tingly. I think it would work, right? It would still... I mean, what do you I think I would save it for when I was dying. Oh. You know what I mean? I thought it was a, to get rid of the love guru. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I could take some sort of like futuristic space cure to remove that from my consciousness. Yeah. The love guru is like... I don't want to say a cancer. It's a cancer. It's a cancer. Yeah. When you have it, it's very hard to get rid of it. I hate that. I I despise that movie. It might be worse than a cancer. Is there something worse than a cancer? Is that worse? I don't really want to speculate at this at this point. I, it seems bad. Yeah. Not good. Cancer? No thanks. Yeah, I don't want All to. right. I'm out. Uh, when will it end? Coming in hot and angry at? Against cancer. cancer. We're a podcast against cancer. Yeah. We're not fundraising for it per se or oh. at all. No. Because those, just, those we're corp- against they're corporations, it. man. Oh, man. All these cancer money and they get it and it's bad. It goes to the CEOs. The, the government is hiding Khan's blood from us. We yeah. cure all the cancer. That would cure everything. Here's what I'm wondering. If we can make Khan in the future of Star Trek, why don't we do Khan now and use his blood now? Say that again. Okay. In the future, we make a Khan guy who got regenerative blood. Why don't we just make him now? Uh, can you say that one more time? Okay. So in the future, they make a guy with blood to regenerate. You can stick it into a baby girl or a triple or a Kirk and they're fine. It's just fine. Don't worry about it. Great point. Yeah. I, I get, so I why get don't we now. just make it now we and then we'll it use now. it for stuff now? Wow, that's such a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Do you think it, do you really think it is? I do. Yeah. Well, let's do it now. Now. God, gets, scientists go on and on about how cool science. Have you been to that website? I fucking love science. No. Gotta go. Man. I don't like science. No, you will. I, I never like science. The, this one's cool because it has the word "fuck" in it. That's crazy. I fucking, fucking love crazy. science. I like that. That kind of irreverence that people bring to things. I know, but it's like yeah. still pretty uh, fucking like aggressive. Remember, and remember in the Martian when uh, when Matt Damon's like, "Eat my asshole, Mars." <laughs> Can I have tell you something embarrassing? Yeah, that I almost told you before, but then I decided not to. But since you brought it back up, it's like this is God telling me I gotta. Okay, I'm pretty sure the first time I heard. David Bowie's Starman was in The Martian. That's actually depressing. Yeah, isn't that awful? That's really bad. I never got into Bowie. I mean, no one has to do anything in this crazy world. I would say that you're denying yourself an ocean of wonderful music. I tried, after he died, I tried listening to his music. It just didn't, I mean, you know, I've I've heard it before, some of it. like I think it was the kind of thing, I remember this is a true story for millennials only, so everyone else, get the fuck out. Yeah. Um, I was using my Zune in high school. Cool. Which, as you may remember, by the way, before it was a punchline in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in the Marvel Universe, it wasn't actually, I, I think, a very underrated music listening device. So you think Zune better than Pod? Absolutely. Yeah? The layout was better. The design was cooler. The screen was better. Everything about it was cooler. It looked awesome. And even better, it had a thing where you could turn on a lo- a, a little scanning device where if there were other Zunes nearby you, oh my God. you could see what other Zune users were listening that to. That sounds awful no that's very amazing. invasive it's amazing and maybe for all these dating apps you all could have been fucking through zoom we could have been zooming hey you also like nelly i like nelly too but now like remember, one of those gaydar things it's like a gaydar yeah, thing but like, for you know for music m- taste yeah. um and they're the same thing really you know i think my sexuality music lover that's how I identify. <laughs> That's how you identify? On Tinder, uh, 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 coffee, bagel, all the dating apps, Hinge, I'm always like music lover. As my sexuality. sexuality. And then on my, my bio just says, my only mistress is music, sweet, sweet music. How's that working out? Not well. No. People don't like it. Yeah? Yeah. I'd like it. Yeah. I think it's great. It's really like, what's your, what's your go-to fuck song? 
Oh, I mean, abs- I mean that's an, an, almost a and silly question And you can't say Beastie Boys, whatever song was in the Star Trek movie. Sabotage? Yeah, you can't say Sabotage. That's not oh, your... Oh, crap. You, I mean, even if that is your go-to fuck song, you can't say it. It's actually the Star Trek theme. Oh, which... The, 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 one the rearranged... No, the, <laughs> the one they use in, in the, the first... The 2009 Star Trek. Okay. One. The really uninspiring one where you're like, oh, I guess that's the one. What's your go-to um, spaghetti song? Like... First free spaghetti. First date spaghetti. Uh, spicy pizza pepperoni. Hey, no. Okay, so um, in the movie, uh, fucking hell, I don't even know where we got. You son of a bitch. First date spaghetti. No, before that. Oh, sorry. I'm just music lover. Let's bring it back. I'm trying to reel this one in. You ruined my whole life. You ruined my whole life. Um, we're just we hate it. It's not a good movie. It's not a good series. Let's talk. Yeah. So we're almost, we're getting nearish to the end. Let's I'm for sure at a winnable end point, without a doubt. If we were sort of on the fence about it in the prior movie, right. at this point I'm like, either completely overhaul it and do a full, like, you know, re- complete reassessment of everything about this, tonally, etc., or just fucking quit it. Because it, it's joyless. It feels like a slog. We, yeah. we were definitely, like, waiting for it to end. And again, two was uneven and ultimately disappointing, but not bad. No, it had some really great stuff. One seemed like they were onto a cool idea. And then yeah. they, they, they really like very cowardly, like let go of all those interesting ideas. Yeah. And it sucks because you have so many talented people. This series sucks. This is like a great example of a series that should not be a series. Like if you do not know what you're doing, you should not be making series like this. It's weird. I, I'm very confused because the first one seemed like it had a very big plan for the number, second one. And then it just like fell apart. Well, that's why I think we're talking about series management and story arcs and stuff like that. Star Trek Into Darkness is the bane of this series. The bane. Yeah, without a doubt. Hello. I'll I'm, stay a while and listen. Yes. I'm name. Deckard Bane. Ooh, that's good. I know. I'm, that's the thing I'm most proud of. The The audience for that, I feel like, is huge. The overlap of Diablo players and Dark Knight. Oh, my God. Rises viewers. Yeah. But no one has really acknowledged how funny and smart I am for that's that That's so good. Deckard yeah. Bane. Because the voice is terrible, and that movie is terrible. What about what about Deckard's voice? It makes sense. Deckard's voice makes sense. Yes, I've seen things. Yes, I'm an old Here's man. Here's a little story. But, um, I've seen the devil, and he's big and red. I lived in Tristram. Tristram Shandy. I hear there's a new Tristram in Diablo 3. Diablo 3 looks like dog shit. By Diablo the way. 3 is very fun. 3? Yeah, it's really Really? Great. Yeah, so good. I've heard a lot of bitter criticism of it. It's it's the joyless people. People are like... People that are like, I want to make a mistake in hour three that will fuck up the rest of my game. You took that away from me? Fuck you, That's the Blizzard. fun. Being That's joyless the is fun. life. Yeah, like choosing the wrong skill. That like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. Now I'm, I'm going to have a shit character for the rest of this game. Is it better than Diablo 2? Nothing will be. Yes, it's great. Okay, I, It's whatever. more my style. It's like you can ch- re... You can readjust your points whenever you want. You okay, can okay, okay. Skills. We're not, this is not a fucking Diablo 3 review. Yes, it is. Shut up. It's so much better than this movie series. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but what I was trying to say is like the major miscalculation in this series, and I think we agree on this, is that the choice in the second movie to dive into like a very dark, convoluted, questioning everything. Like, it's way too ab- early. It's way too abrupt. It feels unearned. And then we, they spit us out into the third movie, which now has to be, like, another episode. It, it's it's very disjointed. It's very poorly planned out. But it's also perplexing, because the first one was such a trampoline for something, and they just chose to take it in a direction immediately that makes no sense. Yeah, it's, it's as though they really thought that they, like, it's as though they made a bunch of content that they didn't show anyone. And it's like, no, you, if you're making a series and you're building worlds, you have to show us the world. Yeah. And that's ultimately what's the problem with this. And I think it's, I'm, I'm glad we watched it. This is like a textbook. On how not to do, how to not build a world. Not to build a world. Because in the first movie, they're, they're like, we're going to play with this world. And then the second and third movies just question it. Yeah. But I'm like, no, you have to have the confidence to live in it. And honestly, if you're listening out there, you have to have the confidence to live in your own life. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. That's so good. You yes. should be a, an emotional speaker. I'm, I am an emotional speaker. What does that mean? I spit in your face a lot when I talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you're, you're giving an emotional speech today. 
I am giving an emotional speech today. In fact, we're, we're, the minutes are winding down before I take to the stage to inform young people about the magics of radio journalism. That's so cool. It is pretty cool. I shape young lives. That's so cool. I'm a cool man. What do you, how do you shape them? I'm um, like, don't get into radio. It doesn't pay well. Yeah. And it's a lot of work. It's an unbelievable amount of work. For the, uh, the, the, the bang for buck on it is a woeful. But the reward, when you know that the, like six people heard and complained about how you read it on air, that's really where it all comes to. But sometimes you home. go to the bar and they're like, hey. Hey, NPR. Somebody yelled NPR when I walked into the bar the other day. And I was like, I've made it. <laughs> Someone yelled the uh, company we license content from that we're currently feuding over, over licensing fees. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that's actually a whole other story that no one cares about except for people who work in public radio. But uh, anyways, that's where we're at with the series. We're talking about NPR now. Wow. That's boring. It is boring. So I, I think boring. Let, let's really bring this to a close here. I, I don't think we need to say much more about the series. I think it is the worst of the series we've watched so far. Absolutely. I think moving forward, I'm going to keep my eyes open for this kind of structural, the, the architectural problems with this that were un, unsurpassable at a certain point. Yeah, this was a disaster. It was so like, this was one of those movies where so much happened. And none it, of, it sucks. It, you don't care. We need some lulls we need some time to live we right can't just be like there's maybe a few moments that suck where simo peg is just like talking to that lady i think that's like the slowest this movie ever gets mm. and I actually i like the old tech of the old ship that was probably the best part of the movie like i like that that looks good yeah, but why is the screen from the 22nd century green because everything's green why because of Alien, I, I really maintain that, like, because of Alien, we just assume that all old, like, all futuristic, retro futuristic tech is green. Well, that's because that's what the tech was like when Alien was around. God, we, we, are you, I, are we, you too we young? Should have watched Alien like three times. Alien came out in 1979. You were not around. No, just saying, but like, are you too young to remember what like? Yes, I remember app, a Apple Mac IIe. DOS would have the, the weird green on black. Yeah, it looked really weird. Yeah, I think that's like. It's not Alien that made that. It was that. That's actually, no. I think the the iconic image of someone typing things into a computer. That's definitely right, alien. but that's just because that's what computers look. Doesn't like. Doesn't matter. It was enshrined by Alien. We're not arguing. All right. Okay. I love arguing. So our next series is, of course, Die Hard. I think so. We'll, We're gonna do Die Hard. We will. I mean, we need. We gotta do Die Hard. And we also need to like cleanse the palate. Yeah, a real change in pace. Something yeah. fun and exciting, like all of Die Hard. We're gonna do Die Hard, and it's gonna be great. Probably. Probably great. Um, well, yeah, no. man. This was, I think, again, just as a, a final reflection, this was a series where I wanted it to end. Yeah, and I think we haven't really gotten to that point fully yet. Well, that's true. I think Austin Powers redeemed itself. Absolutely, and and then it ended with. I guess that's the end. Yeah, even though there's connections between the Love Guru and everything that Mike Myers does. Well, he should be shot for Love Guru. Yeah, and with oh. that, Charles, I have oh. to go to the bathroom. Okay, so I'm going to say it ended. Thank God. Don't watch Star Trek. These movies are trash. Yeah, watch anything else. Yeah. And stay tuned, but we're definitely going to do Die Hard for the next series. That was When Will It End, a podcast from Josh and Charles Productions, produced by Josh Landis and edited by Charles Hobby. Always want to thank Waste Management for their song at the front and end. Uh, if you like us, please rate and review us on iTunes, blah, 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 at WWIA Podcast, WWIA Podcast at gmail.com, whatever. May the force be with you.